Today I'm going to give a quick talk about motors in the RT Builders group from when the group started right up to now. It's not an exhaustive list but it gives you a quick overview of motors, characteristics, gear ratios and things to consider. This is a motor. Um, it's also quite a big motor. This is a 24 volts, one horsepower. Um, it's an old one I had from my Robot Wars days, but it's good to show a principle. You have the motor body here and the shaft um, that connects to a, in this case, a sprocket that will connect to a chain to a drive system. Motors are typically 12 volts or 24 volts. You can run a 24 volt motor at 12 volts, but the number of amps it will pull is increased. And amps tends to kill electronics rather than voltage, so you need to be careful. So another thing you have to be careful of with motors is back EMF. A motor will take a voltage and it will sort of like turn the shaft, but also if you turn the shaft, it will generate a voltage. So to prove this, I've just connected another motor to output wires. Um, bit of tape just here, and as I turn this, you can see the shaft, uh, the other motor turns. So this is important because if you have an R2 and you're pushing it, it will turn the motor that will generate a back EMF, a back voltage to the speed controller. Um, and if your speed controller isn't clever enough or doesn't have the required electronics, it can sort of blow it. At the start of the R2 Builders Group, around sort of 2000, there were no off-the-shelf drive systems and people used what they could. Some people used pancake motors, while others used surplus motors. Heath McMillan and Alex Kung found out you could use sort of wiper motors as a drive system. So here is a wiper motor with the cover removed. Normally the wipers connect to an arm here. So this uses a worm gear. So motor drives a worm gear. Worm gear drives a big gear goes yeah onto wipers so um this is a very geared down motor as part of that you can't back drive it so if i wanted to sort of drive a motor by turning the shaft i can't there's no sort of way to do it so this is a downside because if you use this to drive an r2 and you break down and um, because you can't sort of back drive a motor you're left carrying your r2 or waiting for someone with a trolley. This is the first drive system I built, but sort of never used because subsequent drive systems came out afterwards. Here I have, yep, motor and worm gear assembly. This in turn drives a main gear here, and that drives two subsequent gears connected to wheels. Um, by adjusting this gear here to make it smaller or larger, it can be made faster or slower. Um, again, I never used this because yeah, subsequent motors came out and I made this around sort of 2000, so it's now 20 years old. Yeah, one of the important things is it does have sort of like two wheel drive, so in total of two feet you'd have four wheel drive. Um, the downside of this is when you try to turn on itself, you sort of scuff the wheels. So yeah, never a good drive system, which I know now. Um, People sort of do use sort of two-wheel drives these days, although they've moved over to like a omni-wheel type second wheel, so this wheel can turn while one's driven. As the electric scooters came along, we had sort of, yeah, these motors which sort of like revolutionised the RT building. Here you can see this is a standard sort of 12 volt. 100 watts uh, motor the my 1018 it uses a timing belt um and this will go to the sort of driven wheel sort of here via a belt the gear ratio is roughly 88 teeth on the driven wheel and this is about five and a half inches um and 16 teeth on here so gear ratio of 5.5 to 1 for every 
sort of 5.5 revolutions of this motor this wheel turns one um, here you can see the rated rpm is sort of like 2700 so 2700 divided by 5.5 is 490 RPM. It's important because we can actually calculate the rough speeds of that using a chart. Luckily, someone has already produced this from the RT Builders Group. It's a five and a half inch wheel at uh, 490 RPM, which is actually down the bottom, sort of here. So just do a quick sc scooter. Ideally, you want your sort of like driving a speed somewhere in the green to orange band. And this chart gives you a list of, yep, so wheel diameters on the top and RPMs here. There are different types of, sort of scooter motor. Um, you can also get sort of like chain drive and different sizes of motor. The benefits of the sort of like timing belts is they are sort of relatively silent but over time they can sort of like loosen up and also they can sort of break chain drive is sort of noisier due to like all the metal component and it does go slightly loose over time uh, but you don't tend to get breakages and also because it uses oil between the links it can be messy especially with oil spraying up um, so this is a 12 volt 100 watt as I've shown before and um, this is a 24 volt 200 watts and you can see the sort of size difference initially with my R2 I used a 12 volt 100 watts I found um, when using or when it was driving on a thick carpet so I had problems I needed to almost give it maximum power for it to take off it's once you got to maximum power it sort of shot off so then I upgraded to a 24 volts I think 150 watt as you can see this is quite big and when you've got the foot shell it starts to sort of like get tight in space before I upgraded my sort of drive system on R2 here is sort of my old foot shell um, yeah motor here you can tell where a flat spotted it somewhere um, and an omnibore at the front, omnibore front and um, these days if I did this system, I would use a sort of X Omni wheel at the front. Um, they're a lot better. They are a sort of bit noisy, but they're better than these, which pick up all types of rubbish. On the chart, it said it should do about 490 RPM. Um, using a toy, it shows I'm actually getting 355 RPM. So just because of mechanical resistance in this, it's yep, sort of slowing it down um, and motors aren't 100% efficient. And to go, as I said earlier, um, some motors are easier to stop. So this is where you can see it's, I can stop it, uh, sort of like slow it down, which I can't do with other motors. If you're driving a 60 plus kilo droid, um, Scooter motors can be sort of a bit underpowered or you need sort of power to get going. So if I go back to the chart, in theory, it should have been sort of down here that we were, we were seeing about 350, which takes us to uh, about 5.7 miles per hour, which again, is sort of quite fast anyone who has seen that scooter motor r2 can tell you they are yeah inherently fast um, and at top speed can be potentially dangerous if you're driving in a sort of large area and um, i have seen a few crashes with scooter motors after scooter motors came the npc 2212 these were really hard to get in the uk unless you imported them um, and they became sort of expensive you can still sort of buy them but we have been sort of superseded by other motor choices you've got it's very similar to the wiper motors you have a motor here worm gear here and sort of big spare gear here which drives the 12 or half an inch output shaft um this is 
actually not mine thank you to the person that lent it to me um out of all the motors i think i had most of them but not this one um thanks to you know who you are um and it cleverly tells you specs on the motor so this is 12 volts 285 rpm to fit this in a battery box um you have to sort of tilt at an angle and sort of grind the top off um and cut off one of the output shafts this sort of motor is used very heavily in the jag drive systems and center drive systems going back to speed charts the jag or drive or center drive system allows you to have different gear ratios between this gear and the other gear and it gives you a mixture from 2.7 miles per hour to 3.3 miles per hour and on a five inch wheel so it takes us to about this speed here npc it's a good drive or oh, it's a good motor it's incredibly powerful um if i held this it would just sort of like shred my hands um because of the amount of gearing involved yeah one of the downsides is if you're droid stops um you're gonna have to carry it because there's no way i can back drive this motor you can hear it sort of locking up i'm just going to roughly explain about sort of like different motor types now so this is an example of a cheap 9.6 volt drill motor um i've removed the chuck replaced it with wheel and this is a great sort of like cheap dome motor drive sort of rockler goes here just sort of turns it around brushed motors have been around for a very long time they're called brushed motors because they have sort of positive and negative wires these go to two brushes um which drive the sort of rotor inside um these type of motors up to i think 80 percent efficient um you can put positive negative here um reverse them to reverse the direction or you can do some type of pulse in of the voltage to sort of speed it up, slow it down. In the past few years, like in hobbying especially, the move is away from brushless motor to brushless. These are sort of a lot more efficient. Um, with a brushless motor, you either have three or more wires. They're basically like a stepper motor, um, but sort of say different by putting a pulse on each wire in turn you do steps and you can feel it sort of stepping when you turn around and these have a specific sort of like speed rating so with a brushed motor you'd have yeah speed rating at say 2700 rpm at 12 volts these have a what's called a kv rating so oh, this is 268 kv which means it turns 268 rotations with one volt um so if i put 10 volts in it it would turn 2680 rpm um the newest type or sorry different type of brushless motor is one where you have multiple connectors at the end so you have the same three wires for sort of powering it but you also have what's called sensor wires um so in this i have five so you have positive and negative and then the three phases which corresponds to these three so as the motor turns it can tell you where it is in position to the actual rotor itself so you get higher better position control so brushless motors are a lot more efficient than the old brushless mo or brushed motors so these are moving away and hop, like the general hobbyists or like quadcopters rc cars rc planes um are going towards these brushless motors because they have higher sort of like power to weight ratio than the brushed motors so recently in the r2 builders group we have moved towards the sort of like some people moved to the q85 brushless motors so here's one here you can get them in 201 rpm or 328 rpm so again if i just quickly go to the speed charts it's roughly 116 
millimeters diameter say four and a half inches and I've got 200 rpm here and 328 which is down here so yeah 328 is quite sort of fast compared to 201 um, I personally prefer 201 but some people prefer the faster 328 so Q85 and recently it's been really hard to get hold of the 328 RPMs. This is using a tyre from Frederick. Um, when you buy the motor itself, it comes in a... Uh, take this off. Um, two rims. And what happens is these rims go to spokes. And this is meant for a uh, e-bike. And it just goes in the middle. And from an e-bike, you can tell... The amount of power it has because e-bikes are meant for a like 70 kilogram plus person and these have enough power to take you from a standing stop to however fast you want to go and you can tell yeah it's got the sort of like specs here um, one thing about the scooter drives is they're not meant to take you from sort of like standstill with an electric scooter you're supposed to sort of like kick yourself off so this is again another reason why potentially it's not the best fit for so r2 builders besides the q85s you have the sort of brushless motor bit here um, and it goes via a planetary gearbox to a gear which we weld or shim shut and then that goes there at least um, and that's attached to the actual outer surround of the motor um, as the motor drives it drives this which drives the outside so it's just a sort of planetary gearbox for motor in the middle um, these are sort of like very efficient motors and also very powerful. When these turn, you just sort of can't hold them due to the amount of power. And again, if you can imagine he's taking a like 70 kilo person from being stationary, you can see the other power involved. I mentioned earlier about voltage of motors and power. Um, power is volts times the number of amps. So for this um, scooter motor, it's 100 watts, 12 volts. So 100 divided by 12 is 8 amps. That is potentially just like a normal running current. If you hold the motor or if you're, say, driving on carpet, it's harder to drive. Um, the motor will go slower or if the droid's going up against something, it will stall the motor. Then it can go up to a lot more, say, potentially 30, 60 amps, especially for NPCs. This is important because if you have a sort of like fixed battery then it only has a certain number of amps it can deliver and it's with speed control as well. You don't want to blow the speed controller up if you're trying to deliver too many amps. With the scooter motors and NPCs they are sort of quite inefficient and can pull a lot of amps on stall. With the brushless motors as I've said already they are more power efficient so I think this is 200 watts for the Q85 and um, this motor here it can take a lot more voltage but I think at maximum voltage it's something insane like 330 watts um, and as a test when I was testing them I had this in the gearbox and two of them quite happily drove me around my living room on a test bed um, and they pulled about sort of one amps. I got it up to about two amps when I did a quick reverse or tried to stall it. The Q85s, again, as a test, about an amp normal usage. Um, I think I did get it to up to 10 amps on a stall, but that's not a lot compared to a scooter motor, as I've said, which can run at so eight amps normally. This is important because it's related to battery life. On my R2D2, I was using 24 volt, um, 150 watt motors, and with 
to 12 volts, 7 amp hour batteries, I get about half a day's usage um, with moderate driving. With the brushless motor here, um, with about turbos and a 5 amp hour battery, I got almost a day's driving. So you can see from a smaller battery, I was getting some more usage because they are a lot more efficient.